In one of his letters to the American believers, Shoghi Effendi has used four adverbs which help us, in, which tell us how to teach. These four adverbs are prayerfully, tactfully, lovingly, persistently. We'll take one at a time. Prayerfully. There is a letter from Shoghi Effendi in which he says that we must make teaching the dominant passion of our lives. Now just think for a moment what this means. Think about the human race, generally speaking. They have passions. For example, a dominant passion in the non-Baha'i youth is pleasure. Another dominant passion is money. Another dominant passion is power, more power, and so on and so forth. Now, what should be the dominant passion of a Baha'i? He says, teaching the faith. <laughs> In other words, I should want to teach the faith. I should need to teach the faith. I should love to teach the faith. I should be thinking about it when I get up in the morning. I should be thinking about it throughout the day. I should be waiting for an opportunity that I should seize to mention the name of Baha'u'llah, to mention the name of the faith, with dignity and the opportunity will come if I have this passion if I'm longing to do that every day of my life it doesn't take time you know while I am dealing with people in my office while I am working while I'm even going to the grocer's shop <laughs> whatever it is if I have an opportunity I should, I should seize it in order to <clears throat> mention the name of the faith. And then, if the person is thirsty, that person will ask more questions. But I should drop the name. I should mention the name. In fact, there is a letter from Shoghi Effendi in which he says that we must mention the name at least once in 24 hours to a non-Baha'i. This is not Ali talking to you. This is Shoghi Effendi telling us. The guardian of our faith is telling us. When it becomes the dominant passion, that's what happens. Now, <clears throat> there, is a, there is also a letter from Shoghi Effendi. <clears throat> Someone has asked Shoghi Effendi <clears throat> that <clears throat> how can I <clears throat> find receptive souls. And she was living in a city <clears throat> and she says, it's very difficult for me to find these receptive souls. What shall I do? Now, Shoghi Effendi's answer. He said, <clears throat> he wrote that, <clears throat> yes, he agrees. Shoghi Effendi agrees that there are receptive souls in every city. However, to find them, we have to use prayer. We have to pray every day. Oh God, send me receptive souls. He should, of course, that person should also mix with the people and be able to mention the name of the faith. But if the attitude is right and God sees it, Baha'u'llah sees it, then he will send these receptive souls. Baha'u'llah in the Kitab Aqdas, dear, dear friends, says, we see you from our realm of glory and we will assist you, we will help you with the cohorts of our angels from the concourse on high. They will come to you. Referring to this text, in the Kitab Aqdas. There is a letter from Shoghi Effendi to the American believers 
He says, you are doubting? Let the doubter arise. Instead of saying, you doubting Thomas, get out of my sight. He says, come my dear friend, you doubt what Baha'u'llah has said. Let the doubter arise and see for himself and herself how valid is the promise of Baha'u'llah, how he will come to our aid, how he will inspire us, aid us, help us. <clears throat> you know, I often think that <clears throat> uh, we should explain things through examples. <clears throat> now here is an example. Supposing there is a small town <clears throat> And there is a tourist that has come to this town. And this tourist is looking for a special type of paintings. <clears throat> she doesn't know where to go. She goes to the, there is a tourist office, a tourist bureau. She goes to the tourist bureau and says, do you have shops here which sell old paintings? Now, there are two shops in that little town. One of them is always closed. The other one is always open. Let us ask ourselves what the answer of the tourist office will be. Will it be by to give the address of the shop which is closed? Certainly not. The tourist office will give the address of the, of the shop which is always open. What is happening to the other guy who has this shop? You know what he's doing? He's closed his shop. He just loves these paintings. He doesn't want to separate himself from the paintings. He brings his camera and takes a picture, another picture from a different angle. And then he has a number of books, an encyclopedia and so on, trying to see when the artist drew this picture, under what conditions. He's writing a thesis on this particular picture. Now it's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But to close the shop, to be able to do that, he doesn't want to be disturbed. That is the reason, maybe. But he's not going to be sent this client. The client will be sent by the tourist bureau, which is the concourse on high, to the shop that is open, to the Baha'i whose heart is open, to the Baha'i whose home is open, to, to the Baha'i who is waiting. He is standing almost on the sidewalk waiting to see who it is that's going to come and inquire. If this should be our attitude, Baha'u'llah will send his receptive souls because they are his servants. They are his creatures. They love him and he loves them because they are seeking the truth. They are genuine seekers of the truth. He will send them to us. And believe me, it is so easy to teach someone who is waiting and ready. As soon as you mention the faith, they will drink in everything. Because they are ready. They are seeking. And it's very easy to teach that way. <clears throat> the second thing is the question of to teach tactfully. To teach tactfully is you have to know what the susceptibility is of that individual you're talking to. Is he <clears throat> somebody who is interested in prophecies, for example? You have to go into the prophecies in the Bible. Or if he's a Muslim in the Quran. If he is not interested in prophecies and passages in the scriptures of past religions. He is more interested in social issues. You have to, this is where we correlate the teachings and our beliefs to the needs of the people. 
We speak in accordance with their needs, with their temperament. <clears throat> Lovingly, we should teach with love. Love in our hearts. Love, first of all, love for God. Love for Baha'u'llah. This beautiful poem which our friend read here. Love. <clears throat> love for the teachings. Love for Baha'u'llah. Love for the whole idea of delivering the message to, uh, to a receptive soul. To give the water of life to a thirsty soul. This type of love, pure love, selfless love. And finally, persistently. Persistently, we have to do it every day. And I've already mentioned that before. Now, <clears throat> we have excuses, of course. We say, you know, Mr. Nakshivani, believe me, I understand all what you say, but if you look at me and the life that I have, I simply have no time. <laughs> you don't know how busy I am. Okay. If you, if you have listened to what I just said about the dominant passion, dominant passion doesn't take time at all. It's something, it's with you, in you. It is your love for the faith, your love to deliver the message prayerfully every day. The opportunity will come. It doesn't take time. It's with you every day, all the time. <clears throat> Think of a bee. <clears throat> a bee sits on a flower or nature, if you like, <laughs> has given this body a certain capacity to retain the pollen, the grains of pollen from this flower. It flies to another. It's totally unconscious. The bee is unconscious. But you and I are not bees exactly, 100%. We are conscious beings. It flies to another flower, what happens? It deposits, some of these grains of pollen are deposited on the other flower. And as a result, there is an interaction, and there is life, life goes on. <clears throat> we are bees. We have, we sit on the teachings we, even if we pick one grain, one grain of pollen from the teachings, we've carried something. We know about, let us say, the principles of the faith. That's enough. We know a little, we give little. We know more, we give more. Wisely, tactfully. <clears throat> so we shouldn't think that we have no time. We just mix with people see what the needs are, and we just leave something from the teachings with them, with dignity, with measure, with moderation. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. And we should not be afraid. We should know that he will come to our aid, and he has said so. About knowledge, we have heard from Ruhiya Khanum something that her mother has said, and I, we hear it from Violette whenever she is able to deliver a talk on Mrs. Maxwell. Mrs. Maxwell used to say, the mother of Ruhiya Khanum, used to say that <clears throat> the faith is like a university. We register but we never graduate, never graduate. If you think that Mr. So-and-so, oh, he is a big scholar, there are many things he still does not know, <laughs> or she does not know. We never become perfect in our knowledge of the faith. We are just growing all the time. We are learning all the time. <clears throat> so don't be afraid to teach the faith. 
on the third point, which is living the life. I read to you a passage from Shoghi Effendi. The last few passages, the last two passages. He gives a list of ethical teachings. At the very top, the very first one that he mentions is chastity. <clears throat> now, in other letters, he advises the youth to commit to memory passages from the writings of Baha'u'llah and from the utterances of Abdul Baha, <clears throat> especially the talks that he gave in the West. He says, commit to memory these things and use them in your teaching work so that you deliver the message in its pure form. You don't include your own thinking as you are <clears throat> conveying the message of Baha'u'llah. Memorize it and deliver it. Another <clears throat> suggestion that you find in the writings of Shoghi Effendi to the youth is public speaking. He says, if you are in a college and there is a class for public speaking, take the course on public speaking. Because public speaking is important for the youth. Because they have to proclaim the cause. They have to teach the cause. They have to promote the cause. They should be able to, to do it in an effective way. In other passages, he explains the importance of being active in the community. And I'm almost quoting his words. I've summarized it because of the time element. On the question of the importance of association with and participation in the work of the community. <clears throat> the fundamental Baha'i principle involved is that the advantage, follow this argument of Shoghi Effendi, please. The advantage of the part is best reached by the advantage of the whole. Shoghi Effendi points out again that man is organic with the social environment around him. His inner life molds the environment and is itself deeply affected by it. There is an action and interaction between the individual and the community. The, communi the individual supports the community, the community helps the individual and his spiritual growth. The two work together. <clears throat> now, again on the question of living the Baha'i life, <clears throat> somebody in the United States asked Abdul Baha when he was there, that she wanted very much to live the Baha'i way of life. She asked, what shall I do? Now look at the answer that, Shog that Abdul Baha has given. He says, if you want to live the Baha'i way of life, the first thing is to acquire a thirst for spirituality. In order to acquire a thirst for spirituality, you should do three things. You should... <clears throat> Pray. Two, you should read the writings of Baha'u'llah. Three, very strange thing he says for the third one, reflect upon life after death. Let us take the first one, this question of prayer. I have mentioned prayer several times during my presentation to you this evening. <clears throat> but because of what Baha'u'llah says in the hidden words, bring yourself to account each day before thou art brought to a reckoning. I think a Baha'i, a conscientious Baha'i, in private, should ask himself, these few questions. Do I perform the obligatory prayers every day? One of these three. Do I repeat 95 times Allahu Abha 
every day? Only you can answer yourself. Do I read the Baha'i writings of Baha'u'llah twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening? He doesn't say that we should read ten pages. There's no reference to the amount of reading here. It could be one sentence. It's enough. But we should read, we should follow what Abdul Baha is telling us, what Baha'u'llah is telling us in the Kitab Yaqdas. <clears throat> there is a letter from Abdul Baha in which he says, most of the time I am in an attitude of prayer. For those of you who speak Persian, because this has not been translated in any Baha'i book, there are aksar awqat man dar hale tazarru'am. Man dar hale tazarru'am. Most of the time I am in an attitude of prayer. Okay. He's the exemplar. He tells me and he tells you, be like me. Follow me. Am I doing this? Am I in an attitude of prayer? Am I with God as I live my life? Or am I with my ego? These are questions that we have to put to ourselves. Do I feel the presence of God throughout the day? Or most of the hours of the day? Am I close to God? Do I realize that He sees me, that He knows me, that He hears me? Am I aware of that? These are the questions we have to put to ourselves. And if you are with God, believe me, He clearly says that He will be with us. He even goes further. In one of his writings he says, if you are with God, God will show you that he is with you. You will see that he is with you. In other words, he will show you signs that he is there with you, helping you, guiding you. This is not Ali telling you anything. I'm quoting for you texts. And I want these texts to enter into our lives and become part and parcel of our lives. And that's how we will grow. <clears throat> and the last one is reflection of life on life after death. In the hidden words, Baha'u'llah tells us, we don't know. Death will come to us unheralded, he says, <laughs> unannounced. As I'm talking to you tonight, I may, have, I may collapse and have a heart attack and create a problem for the organizing committee here. <laughs> he says, unannounced, unheralded, suddenly, no one knows where his end or her end will be and when that end will be. And so Baha'u'llah, Abdul Baha is telling this dear woman who wants to live the Baha'i way of life and reflect on life after death. Don't be afraid of the idea of death. Think about it. Think about it. Are you ready? We have immortal souls, immortal souls accountable to God. Am I ready to be in the presence of my Creator, my Almighty Creator? Am I ready to give account of my deeds? And he says, I even know your secret thoughts. That's in the hidden words. He says, everything you have done is recorded up there. That's in the hidden words. I can't hide anything. But if I think about these things, Abdul Baha is telling us that will help you to live the Baha'i way of life. <clears throat> then 
He says, having done this, then you can begin living the Baha'i way of life. <clears throat> I know that we think, you can tell me, Ali, what you say is, okay, but how can I do all these things that you are saying? Be fair. How can I? <laughs> I am a weak creature. Who am I? How can I do all these things? Well, I know exactly how you feel. But I would like to give you the answer of Shoghi Effendi to the question of, of who am I? Before I do that, I want to tell you that Violette and I have traveled a great deal have lived a long life. We have seen many drops becoming oceans, exactly as stated in the writings. We have seen gnats. G-N-A-T means mosquito. We have seen gnats, according to the writings, becoming eagles. We have seen atoms becoming suns. This is also in the writings. It's not you who does it. He does it through divine confirmations. He will come to our aid and transform us. He will recreate us. Shoghi Effendi uses this term, recreate. He says the cause has the power to recreate us. Only if we want to. Only if we turn to him, only if we arise, only if we are ready to sacrifice, only if we have pure motives. So, with this in mind, let me end my talk with these few passages, again from Shoghi Effendi. <clears throat> the cause was established by dedicated souls whose devotion zeal and self-sacrifice overcame every obstacle and won miraculous victories for the faith of God. We all have weak points. Please take these three four, four words into your hearts. We all have weak points. Shoghi Effendi says the only exemplar of the faith was Abdul Baha. Even he himself in the dispensation of Baha'u'llah says that he as guardian is not a perfect mirror of the teachings of Baha'u'llah. He, Shoghi Effendi. Why does he say this? He says this so that, excuse me, you and I will not say we are perfect Baha'is. We are not. I'm standing here before you I have weak points. We all have weak points. This is what Shoghi Effendi is saying. We are all imperfect. The teachings are perfect. Abdul Baha was perfect. I'll read again. We all have weak points. But when we arise to serve Baha'u'llah, he helps us to overcome them in a truly miraculous way. The glory of our faith is not that people with unique abilities do the work of the cause, but that it is done by the sacrifice of loving and devoted souls who arise selflessly to undertake work they feel themselves incompetent sometimes to achieve. God works through them and endows them with gifts they did not dream they could ever possess. <clears throat> <clears throat>